Welcome back to Team O'Neill. I'm Wyatt. What we're going to talk about today is weight transfer and how that applies to vehicle dynamics. There's kind of two parts to the skid control equation. One is your wheel speeds relative to the vehicle speed and if it's front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, are you spinning the tires, are you locking the tires and that kind of stuff in order to create and control skids. And the other part of it is weight transfer. That's why we've selected an all wheel drive car. It's got a regular center differential in it. The only way to make this car turn and go around corners is to use weight transfer. So let's take an in-depth look at front to rear weight transfer and side to side weight transfer and how that affects the handling of your car. All right, so in any car, weight transfer is critically important. Uh, you know, some people would say, especially on a snowy, icy surface like this, but in reality, it's on any surface. If you're driving quickly near the limits of grip, whether it's snow or ice or gravel or pavement or sand or whatever it is, weight transfer becomes really important at that, you know, top 10 or 20% of driving performance. If you're driving around slowly, you don't need it. If you're relying on spinning the tires to kick you around the corner, you don't need it. But if you really want to go fast, then this is definitely for you. The easiest way to think about this is basically just any car like this is just a metal box on four springs. That's all that's going on right there. And your driving is moving weight around from the front to the back and one side to the other and combinations thereof. So kind of think of it as just a metal box on springs that you're moving around. If you're coming into corners fast and you need to make this car turn in, you need to push that nose down. And what's going to happen is the front springs will compress, the front tires will push down harder onto the earth or into the earth in some cases, and you'll get a lot more bite out of those front steering tires. What that means is you can carry more speed into those turns. If you normally can only go around a corner at, you know, 40 miles an hour at sort of a steady state, you might find you can go in there at 45 miles an hour if the weight's on the front and those front tires are pushing down and biting in and digging and getting more grip even on pavement. It's going to turn in much better and hold the road better because of that weight transfer. How do you transfer weight to the front of your car? Letting off the throttle and or braking and or obviously steering is going to just have some resistance there and transfer some weight to the front. So lifting, turning and braking in some combination thereof smoothly are all going to transfer weight under the front. You're definitely looking to do this in a smooth and calculated fashion. That's where left foot braking is really nice. It's a great tool to have sort of in your toolbox because you can use just as much weight transfer as you want between your right foot coming off the gas and or your left foot going down onto the brake. With one foot, it can certainly be done, but with an exaggerated lift, you get a lot of that lift over steer. Uh, you know, people say snap over steer and all this other stuff. All that's happening is you're letting off the gas in a corner and the weight's transferring quickly. The obvious danger, I'm sure you're all going through in your head, is if you come into a corner with the weight on the front tires, it came off of the back tires. So now you've got 70% of your grip on the front and only 30% on the rear. That's going to make the car a little prone to oversteer. You know, okay, you've cured the understeer and you've made the car turn in for the corner, but know that again, if you're jerky about it or if you do it a little bit too much, the back end of the car will come around. And if you've watched any rally racing or, you know, a lot of tarmac racing at the limit, that's what a lot of drivers are doing intentionally to rotate the car particularly for tighter corners, but even a lot of medium speed corners. And you know, when you're really pushing hard, the fast corners, you'll see drivers go through with just a little bit of angle. So when you do transfer a lot of weight under the front, just know the back end's going to get a little light. It might want to step out of line. That can be a very good thing. Just when you do want to correct for that, you need to put the weight back under the rear. You need those rear tires to bite in in order to straighten the car out. How do we get weight on the rear? By releasing the brakes if we're on them, counter steering if we've got the wheel turned in still, and certainly accelerating judiciously in order to get out of that skid. If you watch 
any World Rally Championship or the top guys here in America or any other country in the world, you'll see that's exactly what they're doing most of the time in order to get around these corners. You're approaching the corner faster than you normally would, lifting and or braking when you turn in to transfer weight onto the front end and get those front tires to bite. The car is going to turn in really well, hold it there if you need to for as long as you need to. You can use that to rotate the car coming into those medium and lower speed corners. And once you've cured that understeer and or made the oversteer that you're looking for, release the brakes, countersteer, accelerate, and the car's gonna drive out of it. So any of these all-wheel drive platform cars, that's why left foot braking is pretty critical to get really good because you can come in using the brakes to make it turn, use the gas to straighten it out, and you'll be able to make those little micro adjustments and do it much more quickly and with a lot more precision than you would just trying to one foot your way around. This does absolutely work exactly the same way in a rear wheel drive car or a front wheel drive car. You just have those added variables of also being able to spin the rear tires in a rear wheel drive or maybe lock the tires up a little more in a front wheel drive. So as you start developing your car control skills, know that those relative wheel speeds and spinning and locking tires is really good and you need to train yourself to use that when it's appropriate. But when you're really out there on a rally or on the racetrack and you're trying to set fast times and win this thing, being familiar with how the weight transfer is going to affect your handling is absolutely critical. And you'll see the top guys in every discipline of every motorsport, whether it's cars or motorcycles or whatever it is, using that weight transfer really, really well. If you really want to hone in on this skill set and kind of calibrate your brain to how it works, start watching some more, you know, new and or old World Rally Championship stuff. Watch Colin McRae on stage. Watch, you know, any of these guys out there. Wait on the front, the car starts to rotate. Wait on the back, coming out of corners. Watching outside the car and inside the car and whatever you can do to get your brain to sort of accept it. There's a lot of, you know, the flat earth guys that, you know, comment on our YouTube channel sometimes like, oh, weight transfer doesn't exist or it's not a thing or it doesn't work or it's not about that. Come on out to the New England Forest Rally and uh, give it a shot if you want to. Definitely watch, you know, the top guys of any motorsport, whether it's F1 or MotoGP or any of this stuff, and you see weight transfer at play. Just do your best to kind of study that and calibrate yourself to it because that's how you win races. So thank you as always for watching. Hopefully this has been informative. If you'd like to come out to Team O'Neill and do some driving yourself, please check out TeamO'Neill.com. We've got rally courses and car control classes and drifting schools and all this stuff all year round up here in New Hampshire. If you're interested in these videos, there's a ton more content on our channel, so check that out. And if you're into it, consider subscribing so you're notified when new episodes come up. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and add them in the comment section and we'll get to those as we can. Have fun, be safe, and we'll catch you next time.